Hello everyone and welcome to my coloring corner. Today is First Impressions Friday and we've got a set of pencils to review that my husband gave me for Valentine's Day and we have presents. We have a present. So let's open the present because I like presents. And this was sent to me by one of the viewers and she wrapped it so pretty. It's got pretty little butterflies and flowers and I'll try not to make a large amount of noise I'm trying not to wreck the butterflies but uh, I might not succeed in that there we go oh and we've got a lovely card oh it looks like she put my logo for the channel on it, but I think it came apart. Yeah, it looks like the glue may have come apart. And then we got some wonderful coloring inside. I think that's, oh, it's a sticker. And this is so pretty. And it says, thank you. And then it's got Winnie the Pooh. And it's been painted. And it says, promise me you'll always remember you're braver than you believe, stronger than you seem, and smarter than you think. By Winnie the Pooh. That is so awesome. A wonderful, wonderful card. And then on the back, she's got some pretty roses and her little logo there. Oh, I'm going to sneeze. Why do I keep on sneezing? All day I've been sneezing, sneezing, sneezing. So let's take this stuff out so that we're not wrinkling and crinkling. Oh. There's our wrinkling and crinkling done. I'll put that away later. Oh, sorry about the sniffles, guys. Been sneezing my little head off. Uh, collector, collector Edition Coloring Book, Margaritaville. It's 5 o'clock somewhere. And... Oh, cool. And it's got a sound DVD of the Caribbean Sea to escape to Margaritaville. And then you open this. And it's got a coloring book. That's so cool. Passes out in my hammock. <laughs> That's so cool. Living it up on in Margaritaville. Oh, very cool. I'm trying to open this with one hand and hold the other. Port of Indecisions. Yeah, I live in that port. <laughs> I live there. <laughs> Volcano blows lava me now. Or lava me not. Wasting away again in Margaritaville. That's so cool. <laughs> oh, that looks good. So many different colors. I'll have to try to color that one. And there we have it. So we'll try to color that one at some point. Oh, that's another cool looking one. Land shark. And then parrots. <laughs> the parrots drinking margaritas. That's funny. It's five o'clock somewhere. Sharks. There's a 
hammerhead. Looks like a great white and all sorts of sharks there. Oh, come on. The paper is fairly thin, but that's okay. It says on the front of this page to tuck it in behind the pages you're coloring to protect the next page. I keep on lifting more than one page. Flip-flop repair. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> when time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> fins to the right, fins to the left. <laughs> That's really cool. Thank you. I love it. It's just adorable. And I love the fact that it comes with a little DVD for people to listen to. Let's see. Who is it done by? Newborn Media. Uh, the trademark Margaritaville is uh, used under license, which is good. That's awesome. So, yeah, that's awesome. Soothing sounds and relaxing sounds of the ocean. That's so cool. Okay. Another one is Pocket Flora Coloring Book, which is a Royal Horticultural Society. And this one is done by Pr Francis Lincoln. Uh, Francis Lincoln Limited. And it's got the beautiful flower on this side, so you can copy it over on that side. And it tells you all about the flower. A little bit about the flower. Which is so cool. So very, very cool. Ooh, forget me notes. Bleeding hearts, I should say, not forget me notes. Peonies. Dog's tooth violets. Mm. There's just so many pretty, pretty colors in here. Oh, look at those purples. Oh, so many pretty colors. Beautiful, beautiful plants. They will be a great deal of fun to color. Snowdrops and lilies. And there's another one in there. Okay. The fritillary flit word I can't say, but it's pretty. <laughs> Sweet peas. Lilies. Periwinkles. Ah, Jacko Bean. Really. Those are pretty too. That's oh, a cool looking plant. Looking flower. What kind of flower is that? Penrose. So lots and lots of flowers with the way to color that they're colored can be colored because it's not exact. You don't have to color it exactly the same way they painted them because these are all paintings that he's done. 
they're not photographs. It's very cool. It's so cool. Just some really pretty, pretty plants. They are beautifully painted, beautifully colored. Because some are painted and some are actually just colored. Like this is the Star of the East. Different ones. Um, and that's magnolias. Oh, goodness. This one even shows you the, the seed pods. That's kind of cool. And colored and drawn. Another one colored and drawn. A lot of the color and drawn ones are by Le Leanna Snelling. Uh, hand colored engraving done by Edwina Smith. Oh, that's a cute one. I like those. They're pretty. And colored engravings. Yeah, so it tells you who uh, colored them and what they are here under the flowers. So that's really cool. Bleeding hearts. I don't know what the other ones were. Then. I don't know. I didn't read it. And it gives the um, actual name of it. So some of them are just not able to be seen, said. Like this is a nightshade. But there's the whole name of it. And it's like, okay, I can't say that. <laughs> So many pretties. The Guernsey lily. Those are little clusters of lilies. They're really pretty. The pinata flower. And fuchsia. And last but not least is the Painted Iris. Absolutely beautiful book. The paper in this book is fantastic, too. It's a nice, thick paper. There's not a whole lot of tooth feeling on it, but I'll have to color it to find out if there is. But it's a really, really nice paper. And then there's this one. Just add watercolor, happy thoughts. Oh, isn't that sweet? You are loved. Easy techniques and beautiful patterns for true beginners. Well, that's definitely me. I am not all the best with watercolors, so the easier the book, the better sometimes. So we might even take a look at this one tomorrow um, for our Saturday, start over Saturday, choose a new page, because... It'll be something cute and maybe something simple. I don't know. So it says, aim high. So cute. And it's a nice watercolor paper. And really thick, actually thicker than um, Christy Rice's books. All my love. 
grow. Imagine. Inspire. Joy in my heart. Think pretty. You are loved. Oh, I love it. It's adorable. And then, of course, you know, it tells you little step by steps how to do each one. Which is cool. Very, very cool. Gives you four little four little steps information on how each one was done and how you would might want to do it. That's very cool. So I want to say thank you so much for sending me those wonderful, wonderful books and your lovely card. I appreciate it and I appreciate you um, with all my heart. Thank you so much. It, I just love them all. And the pretty paper doesn't help either because I love the purple paper. Now, here comes the big one. I'll move this here. So this is a bag. It is a bag of dun, 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 pencils. Go figure, right? This is the uh, a Valentine's Day present from my husband. It is the 120 Castle Arts Gold colored pencils. So it came like this, wrapped in this. It's just a little cardboard wrap, goes over top like that. Inside the, bo the bag, they have the pencils, of course, but they also had all of this. So, my first, my first peeve. <laughs> is putting all this heavy stuff in between the pencils in one great big huge block did um, bow the outer edges like the outer sleeves of the pencil bag not a big deal however this is my second set my first set came with a handful of tips like there was at least 12 15 tips completely smashed it looked like somebody had stomped on it and with all of this in there broke the pencils so possibly not the best way to ship this but it's an interesting amount of things and an interesting I haven't bought Castle Art since Castle Art started to come on the market. So there's all sorts of things in here that I'm told come with normal Castle Arts, but I've never seen them before. So they were they were shocking to me and and really kind of cool. So here we have our contact us card and the Castle Arts Club. I didn't know there was a Castle Arts Club. <laughs> and then, of course, we have their product card. That do, that did come with the original one. It's just a lot bigger now. So these are all the different things available from Castle Arts and their, their colors and all the colors that they have available through all of their products, which is quite a few. I must say, they're getting mighty big. And then we have this one here, which is the step-by-step -step guide to creating the castle gold uh, frise, frise, frise. And it's a big wall chart. Also has the information about the pencils and you know all of this 
all sorts of information about the pencils, about the company, um, where to get other pencils and other types of things. But on the inside, they've got all these pictures here. And each picture has a step-by-step -step guide of how to, how to do it. What colors to use, what number to use out of the set, everything else. I think that is really cool. However, the size of it, not so convenient. But still, really cool. And if you stick this on a wall, easy peasy. But they thought about that. And in this little guide here, which tells you all about your pencils, this is like a little book. <laughs> it even has a table of contents. So it tells you pencil care, sharpening the pencils, holding your pencils, surfaces, color theory, logic of color, light and form, uh, as well as pressure, basic pencil strokes, layering, blending, burnishing, texturing, pr perspective, uh, creating the, uh, the thing that we were just talking about. So it actually goes through page by page how to create those things. And it tells you how to do each part, which is really cool. It looks so cool. You know, these are things colored with the gold pencils, which is also really cool. But it goes through and it tells you how to how to finish, what to do, what sort of things to use for for blending different the way things look, different with um different looks, like with blending powder, baby oil, natural oils, Vaseline, all of those blending mediums that you can use. And it shows you how it looks, which is really cool. And tells you why, which is also really cool. Then, of course, there's a blending chart here. So it's how to take 12 pencils and make 144 pencils, which is awesome. So pretty much you can make a ton of different colors um, just by mixing different colors together, which is really cool. And of course, we all knew that. It just shows you that you shows you what colors are going to be created. And of course, goes through all the different type of strokes that you can make with the pencils. Um, the pressure test. So how much pressure that you're you're putting on. Um, so it goes from zero all the way up to a 10 heavy pressure. That sort of thing. Also gives you your color wheel your information about your colors, more information about the color theories, which is really cool to me too, because I know nothing of color theory. I, I know how to use my color wheel. I know what colors I should be choosing by looking at the color wheel, but nine times out of 10, I don't know why, if that makes sense. I just like to color, but I will be le I will be reading through this and maybe you know spouting off some of the things I've learned. Another thing that it comes with is an A5 uh, 135 GSM black paper sketch pad, a beige portrait paper sketch pad, which is also a 118 GSM, also an A5 th uh, size. A white cartridge paper, 130 GSM. All of these have about 20 pages in them. And this is a 250 GSM Bristol board paper sketch pad. So it comes with four different sketch pads that are quite heavy quality. I haven't opened them. 
but I will probably use them at some point. So those are all the extras that come with the Castle Arts um, bag. So if you buy the tin, those extras don't come with it. But if you buy the bag, those extras come with it. And of course, it has all the wonderful pencils. The pencils, the pencils, and they are very, very pretty. And of course, I will go through the pencils and the information on the pencils after the swatch. So I want you all to grab your cup of coffee, sit back, relax, and we will watch that swatch together. And I will return until so grab everything. Let's get going. Okay, so that wasn't too bad. So we have swatched all of these. Now, as you can see, uh, the one issue I do have is when you pull your pencils out, 
it actually draws on the bag. <laughs> so that's issue number two <laughs> with the bag. However, the pencil does have the color name, a number, and gold premier or gold. Um, what is the name of them? I don't know why it says G, uh, GP. It should be it. Yeah, gold pencil, I guess. So and this is uh, GP is for their gold standard. Has the company name and then of course gold there, and on the end they have it. Here I am showing you the wrong camera. They have a gold stamp here. I'm going to switch you over to the close-up camera so you can see a little better what I was saying. So there is our Naples yellow. And it's got the gold lettering, but it's on a very dark surface. So you can see it fairly well. They've got the number and the GP, which is their gold uh, information there. Castle Arts Gold. Okay, so let's take a look at the original swatch chart that came in the package. So it does come with its own pencil tester sheet. Now, as you can see, <laughs> I had some issues with it. So I don't like the layout. I just don't. So I rearranged it, of course. So I have moved all all the pencils around. It, they are not in numeric order in the swatch or in the bag. It does have some odd numbers like 127, uh, 182, you know, things like that. So there is no actual 1 to 120 color number there. So I have moved those around and created my own swatch chart, of course. So here is the color layout that I came up with. Of course, it's not perfect, but it, it suits the way I color a lot better than um, the way the other one was. Now, they do have plenty of reds. They do have many, many dark reds in this set. I also moved the mahogany, the henna brown, um, and that sort of thing, as well as the terracottas, because I like them up here in the red section. You don't have to do that, of course. Uh, and then we have our pinks, our gray pinks, and our gray lavender kind of colors. Our pink purples into our, our blue purples, so we've got our red purples here and our blue purples here. Then we have our sea aquatic kind of blues here, uh, and then some blues, some light blues and blues. And then we have our greens, and then our aquatic greens here, and our darker greens there. Now, there isn't an overabundance of any type of color if you break it down into the different color ranges. But if you look at it head on, there's quite a few different greens, but there's actually three different levels of green there. We've got our leaf type greens here, our aquatic greens, and then our, our dark greens, our mountain greens there. These two here should, I think, be up here in the blues. If I, if uh, maybe Terra Verde Deep is really close to the Philatheo Green there. So maybe in more of the aquatics. It has a good range of grays and browns, which is fantastic. has a wonderful range of yellows and some peach tones, pink tones for your skin tones. And of course these gr gray purples and gray pinks work great in skin tones for undercolors. Uh, same with the this one here. The Terra Verde would work really well as well. And then we have uh, Earth Green will work really well as well. All right, so there is our color chart. And of course, we have some testing to do. So let's switch on the close-up camera here. And as you can see, we've got our water test 
our smudge test, our three color gradient, our rainbow, our blender pencil, blender pens, erasability, and then the information about the pencils here as well. So let's start with our water. And I've got a water brush here. Just so happens to have water in it. <laughs> Go figure. Huh? So let's grab some yellow and red. Let's see. I know there's one in here that just says yellow. And I just have to find it. Um, maybe not. Maybe it's. Oh, no. It, mm -mm. So there is no actual yellow, yellow. Weird. They've all got some sort of name. So lemon yellow, we will use that. So lemon yellow. And let's use scarlet red. This one here, and then in our blues, we'll use primary blue. All right, so we've got a blue, red, and yellow for our water test. Another thing that I found that I will demonstrate later on um, as I was testing these pencils, uh, because as you know, you know, getting the color chart perfect the first time, it doesn't happen. So there is a, always a process in doing it. And sometimes you end up doing it two or three times. While I was working on the swatch chart and talking to somebody about the pencils and showing them the different levels of color, I pushed really hard on them. And... I think I put too much pressure on them because they don't seem to be doing it today. But I pushed really hard on the colored pencil and the entire tip of the lead, like this whole area, completely shattered. Didn't just f break, didn't snap off. It, it shattered to a crumbly, dusty mess which was very strange to me because I'd done the entire swatch chart and didn't have that issue. Because I do press hard when I press for the hard part of the swatch. So I'm not quite sure if it was just too much pressure or if that's a normal thing. Uh, I did read through different, um, different reviews and watch different reviews and it does seem to be something that may happen often. I'm, I haven't colored with them, so I cannot say whether that's something that's going to happen. I will, however, keep an eye on it so that uh, if it does happen again, um, I can let you know. So I've got my, my water brush here. It has some water in it. And go across the blue. No, no run. Yellow. Red. No run. So they are definitely waterproof. So the company, let's see, I need, uh, I thought I had some paper towel here. I guess I do not. It's okay, it's just water. So the company in one of their pamphlets here does have a statement that they are w waterproof capable definitely are, that they're smear proof as well. So that's what we're going to do here on the smudge. So once again, we're going to start with the blue. And I'm going to put a really good layer, make sure that it's highly, highly pigmented because of course 
when it smears is because we're all done and moving our hand across to color another area. Same with the red. So we've got our blue, we've got our red, and we'll put down our yellow. I have this feeling that I'm coming down with a bit of a cold and it's really, really sneaking up on me. It's very strange. I hate sneak, sneaky colds. Just, just be there and get over. <laughs> Don't be sneaking up on me. All right, so I'm going to... Uh, that smeared a little bit. Not very much, though. Yeah, the blue smeared just a touch, but not enough to really be concerned. So, th definitely smear proof. Now we're going to grab some, let's grab some pinky colors for our three. Oh, let's do purple. Since they're right here. Or pink. Which one? Let's do this one. Um. Azalea. Yeah. Coral Deep and Pink Bloom. I think will be our three color gradient here. So I'm just going to move you up a little bit. I've got to tip the page a little because of the way I'm sitting. And of course, these are an oil based pencil, so. They will lay down with a heavy hand, however, it will kill your page. So just remember that you need to layer. So I've got the layer down for the attachment. Now I'm just going to get this color built up here a little bit. And then we're going to go into the next color. Building that color up together and bringing it out. And blending that color together with each other. Bring, bring this out so that the next color can go into it. And then we'll take our next color and we'll take it right into that. And then we're going to go over it a little bit more just to fill it in a little more because I was a little too light handed on it. Wrong, 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 wrong pencil. <laughs> bad, bad. Keep on grabbing the wrong pencil. And it does definitely do a three color gradient, so uh, even when I mess up, <laughs> it does bring those colors together without a heavy seam, even when I mess it up. So that's great. It did very, very nicely on that blend, which is fantastic. Now we're going to do a rainbow blend. We're going to start off with our red. And again, we're going to build it up. I'm building that color heavier on one side so that the yellow has something to blend into over there. All right, so there's our red. And of course, I could go heavier to eliminate the, the white spot. Going 
into that red. I'm going to go over just a little bit to cover up any of the little areas that I missed. And just going into it, blending it together. Of course, with it being a darker color like red into yellow, you're still going to see a bit of that seam. as it goes into the orange there. So we're going to bring the yellow out. So that when we go into it with the blue, we'll have our green. Alright, now we're going to go in with our, green, our blue, create that green into the yellow. and the blue on the end. So I'm just going to add a little bit more yellow. There is a green there, but it's not as filled in as I'd like. And there we have our green. So we definitely have our rainbow. We have a red, orange, yellow, green, and blue. So definitely have our wet rainbow blend as well. Now we're going to take our, let's take our red for the blender pencil. And we're just going to cover a square. Let's see if I can at least be on camera for you. <laughs> Just because we're going to cover a square and we're going to make it all splotchy. And then we're going to take, and the, the ones that I would definitely suggest for an oil-based pencil is the Derwent blender. Uh, it does work, as far as I'm concerned, the best when it comes to oil-based pencils. You don't need to put a lot of pressure on them, but it does blend all of that color together. And if you are doing a gradient blend, you can start back here with the very, very dark and gradually move it into the next area until you run out of, of color on your on your blender. Basically all you're doing with this is moving the, the color around, filling in some of that white spot and blending that those colors together. You're not burnishing with this, you are just blending, so if I wanted to, I could still add more color to that. Alright, so this one we're going to do, uh, let's do yellow. Now I am going to go a little bit lighter with the yellow, just because it blends itself quite well but you can still see the, the white spot. And then we're going to take our blender pen. So we're going to take our koi here and we're going to blend it with the alcohol blender pen. And it works quite well with that as well. Now in the book they have all different ways of blending. Uh, if you are having troubles using a blending pencil, definitely take a look at that information. It's very, very, very interesting information and all of those ways do work. Alright, so the blender pen also worked very, very well and still leaves you some tooth to work with. So let's try our erase test. 
We're going to do the erase test in blue. So I'm going to do one very, very light layer. And then we're going to do a medium layer. So because these are oil-based pencils, when you do a medium layer, basically what that means is that you're adding multiple layers. So three, four, depending upon how, how deep you want it to be. Okay, and then a dark layer. Now, I know that it, all of these tests are fairly unnecessary because I'm a colorist. I'm not an artist. I'm not going to be putting these on display. So a lot of these different things don't make a lot of difference to me. But as a YouTube uh, content creator, letting you know all of the information, even if you're just a colorist, sometimes having that information is helpful. Um, if there are artists watching my channel, you know, having that artist information is helpful. So that is why I do all of the different tests. It isn't to, to say, okay, well, these run with water or, you know, it isn't to diss or, or make fun of or discredit um, the company and what they say. It's just to inform. That's all it's, it is for is information so that everybody can get the full information. Okay, so this is the Faber-Castell uh, pencil eraser. Faber-Castell um, is a really good brand with polychromos and I use this on their polychromo pencils So, and I find it works the best. So cut in a light area we can fully erase right down to the white. All right, and medium area, just a little bit more pressure. That I barely put any pressure on at all. Practically right down to the paper and probably one or two more passes get right down to the paper on that one too. And then deep. Okay, so what it's doing here is it is picking up some of that pigment and smudging it around. So make sure that you're careful with that, that it's not picking up your pigment. Wipe off your eraser and make sure that you don't have any pigment on there. And then go back and erase what pigment it picked up. So I am finding on the heavier layers, the more layers, that this eraser is picking up some of that that stuff. So I've got a electric eraser here. Let's see if I can get the. Oh yeah, I got lots of. So I have my aft mat here, and we'll go the other direction. So it works really well with the aft mat, and it doesn't drag that color. It does, however, leave the aft mat mess. So <laughs> whichever one, one you choose to go with. But they do erase quite nicely, um, especially if you are just doing one or two layers and go, oops, that's not the color I wanted there. 
or even if you are fully done and you use your electric eraser, you can almost get all the way down to the level of the page where you can easily go over it with another color. This uh, one here, the um, Faber-Castell eraser on the deep or dark areas does seem to drag that color a little bit. So be careful of that. All right, let's talk about price. So the Amazon pricing for this set of pencils is $74.99 for the case. It includes the four A5 paper pads and the, the case itself. The tin price, which doesn't have the A5 paper pads or the case, is $64.99. So in the case, you're spending $0.62 cents a pencil. And without the case, you're spending $0.54. Cents. So it is about the mid-range price for a set of color, 120 colored pencils these days, which isn't too bad. They are waterproof, so let's let's give them their grading. Let's give them their check marks. Okay, so they are waterproof. They are smear proof. I don't know about light faster or acid free. Now it does say that they are bonded, so less breakage. Now I want to see if I can create the, the same um, problem that I had with the ones yesterday. Basically what I was doing is I was pressing, there we go. See how it just crumbled? No, no, you didn't. So basically I was pressing on it like this and it just snapped right off and completely crumbled. And it crumbled in the barrel as well. Like it crumbled all the way down. And it was not with this color that did that, it was with a different color. So when it breaks, when you put too much pressure on, like I put a lot of pressure on it, um, you will shatter your pencil. So make sure that you don't put too much pressure on it from the side of the pencil. Otherwise you will end up with a crumbly little mess. So they do have a bit of breakage ability if you put too much pressure on them. But I'm quite sure most pencils have that issue. I'm not finding that just coloring with them that they are doing that. So the sharpenability test. I did sharpen it. It is very, very nicely pointed and is not loose, does not crumble. and maintains that point quite nicely. So I think that as long as you don't press really, really, really hard on your pencils, this isn't going to happen. But just be pre-warned that if you are extremely heavy handed and you are going to press on that pencil a little too hard, you may find that your pencils are, are quite literally uh, doing little explosions because they do fracture. They, they don't just break off. They do, ex you know, completely crumble when they break off, which is interesting. I, I haven't had just have a lead break off on while coloring. Just that one or two, because I did it a couple of times to see if it would happen with more than one pencil or if it was just that one pencil. But I have had them, if I put a lot of pressure on it, go snap, and when it goes snap, all of the the um, pigment, all of the, the core, just goes into little tiny pieces in little shards. But like I said, that is an extreme circumstance. Um, just with coloring with them, I'm not finding that. So, depends upon how heavy handed you are. So, be careful of that. If you're extremely heavy handed, watch out for that. All right. So, we've got smear proof. I can't tell you if they're light fast or acid free. 
they don't seem to break while while coloring or while sharpening so I'll give them a check mark for that same with easy sharpen they are oil based um, and they don't break down the core when they do break it's just that very tip so basically what they're saying here is they're bonded just like the Faber Castells are where when you do break off a tip it doesn't break off down here and you can't pull it out which is true all right let's see what they passed so they passed the water they passed the smudge they passed the gradient they passed the rainbow they passed the blender pencil and the blender pen and they passed the eraser test they also passed the sharpen test and uh, yeah and the price test the price test is the big one because they're expensive compared to the castle arts that we're used to buying but if you look on uh, Amazon or on um, Dick Blick or anything like that most oil based 120 sets are running about $65 in a tin uh, the reason why this one is $10 more is because it comes with a case and you're not going to find a 120 slot case for $10 never mind all these other extras so kind of a little bit worth it for that extra ten dollars just saying all right so my first impressions of the pencils and I will color with them at some point um, I've already had you in here for an hour so we won't do that right now but my first impressions of the pencils um, they they lay down really 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 nice they they co colored on the swatch very well they are waterproof they don't smudge a lot the the blue smudged a little bit I can't guarantee that was because I didn't brush it off enough they do do a gradient blend very nicely they do a rainbow ver blend very nicely uh, they use the blender pencil just blends them right out so same with the blender pen the blender pen did not seem to um, lessen the color which happens sometimes they do erase uh, with the eraser pencil as well as with the aftmat uh, if you have a full lay coverage a deep coverage or a dark coloring I would use the aftmat before I'd use the pencil eraser because the eraser seems to pull some of that color they do have a bit of a shatter problem so if you are coloring heavy-handed and you are using the edge of your pencil like this and you put too much pressure on it that lead here is going to break and it's going to pretty much uh, just shatter I'm not finding that it happens with regular coloring so if I'm just going like this and I'm doing this heavy-handed I'm not finding that it's breaking I am finding if I put pressure on the very tip and push hard down is when it breaks so try not to do that <laughs> but even even coloring fairly heavy-handed like I'm, I'm putting quite a bit of pressure and I'm turning the the pencil so that I've got a good tip going and it doesn't seem to be breaking on this yellow one so I think it has more to do with the factor of how how long your tip is and how much pressure you're putting directly on the side of the tip like if you're putting a lot of pressure on the side like this it's going to break there's no reason to put that much pressure on a pencil especially an oil-based pencil because oil-based pencils need to be built up just so that you end up with your tooth still intact if you press too hard you're going to kill the tooth of your page and you're not going to be able to get any other colors on there so build the color up to allow further use but once again 
the exploding tip thing, I think it's a matter of having the right amount of tip sitting on the page. So if you if you have your tip about this long and you put it on the page like this and you push down and push up at the same time, you're going to break the tip. Most colorists don't do that. So it is an oil-based pencil, light layers. If you are going to use a heavier hand, just remember that you're going to end up eating the tooth of your page and not able to add color to that area. Okay? So, my advice, yes, they do break if you put too much pressure on them. My advice to that, don't put too much pressure on them. <laughs> that's, that's the only advice I can give you. Um, Am I going to send them ba back because they've done that to me on a couple of different pencils? No, because the reason for that is because I was abusing the pencil. I was using the pencil in it in an improper manner. In their proper usage of coloring in layers, they do very, very nicely. Even coloring in a heavy hand they do very nicely. It's just when you put too much pressure on the pencil and it goes snap. Alright guys, with that I would like to say thank you very much for watching. I hope this has been a little bit informative. As far as I'm concerned, my first impressions with these pencils, and I will be coloring with them soon, um, just from the testing that I've done, as well as some experiments that I did off camera. I think they're a pretty good set of pencils. Definitely uh, a little expensive. I can't say that they're worth the price. However, comparative to other pencils out there and other 120 oil-based sets of this quality, they say that they are uh, acid-free, light-fast, smear-proof, waterproof, and blendable, which they've shown that most of those are true. Um, I can't say if they're light fast or acid free. Uh, they are bonded, so and they do sharpen easily. They are oil based. So basically all of the things that they are claiming to be the higher grade um, or artist grade colored pencils that we know and love all claim the same things. So for it to be an artist grade colored pencil, which it's claiming it is, they're about the right price. So um, yeah, this includes a case, this includes the A5 papers, uh, pads, everything else for $74.99, 62 cents a pencil. I think at 62 cents a pencil, they're actually worth it. When you break it down like that, uh, and you take a look at how much the extras are going to be, a 120 case is going to run you about $20, $15 to $20 on Amazon. Um, the A5 pads, the Bristol pads and that sort of thing, are going to run you about, well, let's say $5 each. That's $20 in pads there. You know, so all in all, your your extras that come with it, not including the information that comes with it, because that comes with everything, but your extras are about $30, $35 worth, and for an increase of $10 from the regular ones. So definitely worth it to pay the higher price for the uh, Castle Arts case. Now, I know that uh, there's a couple of different uh, YouTubers that have a discount code, a 30% off discount code for the Castle Arts website. I'm not, I can't remember who it is, but if you know who that is, buy them through the Castle Arts website. They, it comes out to like $60 for the one with the case. 
So these were a gift from my husband. So if I would have known he was going to buy them for me, I may have sent him there. Um, however, I do find that I really enjoy Amazon's um, return policies and protections. I don't know if you would have that same return ability or return policy with Castle Arts. I'm not 100% sure on that. I've never sent anything back to them, so I can't. I can't attest to it. Yeah, so all in all, I think definitely a good set of pencils at a fairly decent price. A comparable price to anything else on the market in this um, quality range. Um, but yeah, and they have a fantastic selection of colors. Um, they do they do cover all of the color families quite well, um, and they do have a very good balance to each color family, which is great. Like I said, they are an oil-based pencil, so make sure that you remember that they're not a squisher, so build up that color. Anyway, I will, of course, be coloring with these off-camera as well as possibly next month for Monia March. Um, so we'll give these a test out and I'll let you know how I feel about them after I've colored with them for a few times. Of course, tomorrow is our Saturday, uh, start over Saturday. So we will be picking a new picture to color with watercolors. So we will be doing that tomorrow. Um, I do have a couple of books now because somebody sent me a wonderful watercolor book that uh, I will put on the table as one that we can do. Uh, we have not done anything in the Woodlands uh, Painterly Days as well. So we have those two still to work in and uh, we'll pick our picture for the week and uh, yeah and then we will of course color paint we'll figure that out um yeah other than that guys always remember to like comment and subscribe to any uh youtuber that you find and enjoy so i'm just going to take a quick show here of the things that we've looked at today. We've looked at these wonderful books that were sent to me as a gift from one of the subscribers and I thank you so much. You are just so adorable. And then of course we went through the Castle Arts 120 gold edition colored pencils. Did our little testing areas and made sure that they would stand up to different things that an artist would require them to stand up to. As a colorist, I don't need them to stand up to everything. I don't need them to be waterproof. I don't need them to be, you know, I do kind of need them to be smudge proof because I like to rub my hand on things that I shouldn't. But I'm not worried about light fast and that sort of thing. But I do have subscribers out there that are artists that do need to worry about these things and that's why I do the testing that I do. Anyway, like, comment, and subscribe. If you're not already a subscriber, I do do a new video every day except for Sundays and on Wednesday and Saturday those videos are live streams. And of course tomorrow is Saturday. So until then, Thank you all so much for watching. Have a fantastic day. Be kind to one another and always remember to relax, color, and stay safe. Until tomorrow, bye-bye for now.